The purpose of the Atomic Version 24 Upgrade course is to help students get comfortable with a procedure. We move past the purely technical aspects and look at execution. Since much of the work is procedural and involves quite a few people, we want our customers to be successful, and so we'll make sure you're aware of what it means to prepare your teams, the company infrastructure, and then execute the upgrade and the post-upgrade verifications. It's imperative that we project plan an upgrade. We have to prepare the teams, document the key milestones, systems, the network, ongoing operations, security, and a lot more. Many of the business constituents are impacted. You'll need to organize for what's coming. This will involve awareness, communication, training, and securing personal involvement. The infrastructure also requires a high level of preparedness to include the network, host admin access, and more. Then we'll start working on the technical aspects of the upgrade, but without interfering with operations as usual. We'll create the new file systems, work on the UTF-8 database migration, make configuration adjustments, and a few more things. Then we'll bring the system down and execute the upgrade of the server components, UTF-8 migration, utilities, automation engine, AWI, and service managers. Here, minimizing downtime and avoiding mistakes should be your top priorities. Once we're done, we'll start the system and execute a number of post-upgrade verifications. Finally, much later, we'll upgrade the agents and analytics. When performing an upgrade, the enemy is downtime. We have to bring the system down at some point, which will freeze operations and processing. Invariably, applications and critical segments of our business are going to be impacted. It's beneficial to isolate all the work that's not directly tied to the upgrade. We know, for example, that a newer version of the automation engine can support older agents, and so it's best to split up the upgrade as a result. AE, database, AWI, and service managers go first. Then, even months later, we upgrade the agents. Furthermore, there's a number of steps that can be divorced from the production downtime phase and moved to the prep phase, such as making new file systems and handling the history portion of the UTF-8 migration. All of this contributes to keeping server downtime to a minimum. We don't have to perform the entire upgrade on the first go around. Technically, the upgrade isn't very difficult. In reality, our focus needs to be on consistency and accuracy. In that light, preparation is key. Many steps in the upgrade don't require the server to be offline. They can be performed months ahead of time, verified, and fully documented, while operations are processing business as usual. To this end, we structure our upgrade in four separate phases. Step 1 focuses on preparing the organization itself. You can do a number of things that require very little input from Broadcom. They're rather self-evident, but also essential to your success. Step 2 focuses on the technical preparation of the environments. A number of critical steps don't require server downtime. These can be performed and double-checked months ahead. Step 3 focuses on the upgrade proper, in other words, the tasks that have to be performed during server downtime. You should know exactly what they are and stage several rehearsals. Step 4 focuses on the preparing and upgrading of agents. There isn't any urgency to this, and it can be done months after the upgrade. Assuming analytics is also not mission critical and can be out of commission for a few days, we postpone that as well. Let's discuss Step 1 first. There isn't much in the way of knowledge transfer. It's all about preparing your people and the infrastructure. You'll need to secure admin access to all systems. This means the database servers, the automation engine hosts, AWI, analytics, and the agents. Identify the sysadmins, engage them, and request their availability. Also, we strongly recommend you request assistance from Broadcom's professional services and support teams. They're in a position to provide valuable help. Make sure the key stakeholders have received admin training. They should know how to install the solution. TLS was a big hurdle in version 21, and it's not part of 24. This being said, you should check the validity of your certificates and that your system names aren't changing. Check the new compatibility matrix. Any atomic upgrade can impose unforeseen requirements. Double check Java, JDBC drivers, supported database versions, browsers, and everything else. You should perform an export of your agents and queue tables. This is easy enough. Just head to the administration perspective, display agents and export table with all columns. Do the same for queues. This is obvious, but worth repeating. Treat the upgrade as a major project. Inconsistencies and mistakes will definitely break Atomic, which in turn will impact critical segments of your business. Document each step, draft a comprehensive project plan, 
Write out all procedures and the teams accountable for each. Documented procedures alleviate the need to scramble if something goes wrong. Establish a rollback strategy so that you can recover your original system quickly and without efforts. Set up a restore point to ensure that restarting the old database won't take hours. Finally, build a test system and practice. Upgrading is about execution. Rehearse your upgrade multiple times until you're certain that you have it down to a science. Thorough preparation is the surest way to minimize downtime and avoid inconsistencies. To this end, much of the technical work can be isolated from the actual upgrade and requalified as prep work. These tasks can be done ahead of time without bringing down the system. Atomic can continue to process without any impacts. Get these steps right and document all the work. There's no urgency, so give yourself plenty of time and make sure you double check everything. We're assuming Unix environments, which are by far the most common for server components. For each step, we provide either a description or some reference material. We have to install the SQL agents, which doubles up as the DB service. They're both needed for the UTF-8 migration. Together, they're going to copy data to the destination DB and recode the data to UTF-8. You should already have established maintenance procedures. You should be running DB reorg and DB unload on a regular basis and archiving as you go. If not, your system isn't maintained, which is a major cause for concern. Do not attempt an upgrade. This is especially true given that the entire database is going to be copied from the source to the destination and we should be minimizing volumes. You'll need to create the destination database for the UTF-8 migration and execute the initial step, which moves the bulk of the history portion of the data to the destination. We create a new parent directory, say slash opt slash atomic underscore v24, on the same level as the current parent directory. We duplicate source directories for the current version to the new parent directory, again renaming them. In doing so, we're going to recreate the entire file system for each server components. Then we empty the temp directories and delete the old tar files used for the initial installation. We copy the version 24 tar file to each subdirectory. We uncompress and untar each in the same directory structure. This will overwrite existing files in the same directories if they have the same name and create new files if they don't exist. In the next step, we adjust the INI files. The two previous steps created version 24 INI files for the utilities, AE, service manager, and the agents. In the case of AE, this means preserving a current version of UCSRV.ini alongside a new UCSRV.ori.ini. We'll be able to compare the two and make the necessary adjustments. In the case of the service manager, we have to validate the SMD and SMC files so that we're able to control each server components. Standard libraries are no longer included with each component. Instead, they are stored in external resources. These libraries need to be copied to the appropriate location for each component. For AWI, we'll head to the Tomcat installation. In web apps slash AWI, we'll back up the config and auto install directories to make sure we preserve items like uc4config.xml and the install plugins. Finally, we'll need to prepare some test jobs and a test queue, which will run after we finish the server upgrade. These jobs should be relevant and reflect the reality of the production jobs. For example, if your production job contains an include, then the test job should have one as well. Next, we proceed with the actual upgrade, which means shutting down the entire system, effectively ending all processing. The procedure has to be mapped out. The steps are known, the entire procedure is fully documented, and you've rehearsed this extensively. You know exactly what you're going to do and can estimate the time you'll need. It basically boils down to execution. Note that actual downtime means the downtime required to bring the server components down and back up, plus about an hour. Our recommendation is to identify a period of low activity to minimize impacts on operations. At this point, we should execute the last refresh of the UTF-8 migration. This cannot be performed during shutdown since AE is needed but as close to shutdown as possible, and so we've included it here. This will minimize the volume of data that has to be handled post-final. We then execute the final step of the UTF-8 migration. This generates the SQL statements, which will copy the last of the data. We shut down the automation engine. First, we stop production queues and clients, then AE proper. Ideally, you do this using the service manager, which performs a clean shutdown in the proper sequence. Failing this, you can use the kill term command but under no circumstance should you use kill9. The DBA team executes the SQL statements which copy to the destination database 
and recode to UTF-8 in the process. Then your DBA team performs a backup. You'll plug this backup to the plan restore point to restore Atomic with a little effort. You'll rename the directories so that version 24 folders are now the main folders. You'll run the DB load utility and convert data structures to version 24. The web server should be stopped. You'll remove the old AWI war package as well as the AWI directory. Then you'll deploy the version 24 war package. Note that the AWI version should always match the version 24 AE. You'll deploy CAPKI since we're installing a new service manager. Your service managers are able to communicate with the server components and with each other. You'll restart AE and AWI. Finally, you'll run the test jobs. You'll restart the production queues, at which point restoring the old version is no longer possible. You're fully committed to the upgrade. AE is up and running, and your agent should be able to reconnect. When you're confident that AE is running properly, you can move on to the agent upgrade. The following needs to be done for each agent. Assuming we're not using CAU, we're going to perform the same duplication efforts of the agent directory to recreate the structure. We'll configure the INI so it can connect to AE. The decision to use centralized agent upgrade is yours. Nonetheless, you should disable the certificate copy function that comes with CAU. Certificates were already loaded and we don't want to cause discrepancies in the TLS infrastructure. Then we'll move on to the installation. You can use CAU and then the process is transparent. Or you have to shut down the agents and perform a number of extra steps, like installing CAPKI and upgrade the service manager, rename the directory, and restart the agents. It should connect over the assigned JCP's WebSocket port.